You know, I'm sitting here wondering, are the Rangers fans kind of done with this stuff? Are the Rangers fans that watch my videos going out there, clicking on the thumbnails, you know, leaving comments and subscribing and all that, are you tired of all the rumors and the ideas thrown around there? Because anytime somebody in the media in a prominent content creating role, and I say content creating, it kind of sounds like I'm talking about YouTuber. No, I'm talking about people who write articles or who say stuff on the radio and stuff like that. You know, people who are above me on the totem pole of NHL news and whatnot. Whenever anybody goes out there and says anything about the Rangers acquiring some player or maybe being interested in X or maybe targeting Y, I always make a video about it. And it's kind of why I wonder, okay, are the Rangers fans kind of upset or done with these kinds of videos? So you can go ahead in the comments and let me know if that is so. But today's video is going over the New York Rangers, as you kind of know from the title and thumbnail. And we're discussing the idea of yet another player potentially being a target for this team. Now for context on the year. The Rangers are indeed one of the better teams in the entire NHL. They're second in the Metropolitan Division with 64 points. They're actually tied with the Hurricanes, although the Hurricanes have the tiebreaker. They're 7-3-0 in their last 10, and you have yourselves, everybody, showing up to play in the best ways possible. Panarin, Zibanejad, of course, up top. You have yourselves Chris Kreider, who has gone out there and exploded offensively in the best way possible. That is the number one goal scorer in the league, Chris Kreider, to you. We already highlighted this kind of stuff in the Brennan Othman video from yesterday. You have yourselves Adam Fox in the back end and helping him out is Igor Shashurkin stopping pucks like crazy, one of the best goaltenders in the entire NHL for sure. He's in the heart conversation, dare I say, as well. But when it comes to the Rangers, they do have themselves a boatload of cap space that they could go out there and use. This is a team that if you want to go out there and say they weren't really ready, quote unquote, to be this good this soon, I'd honestly have a pretty easy time believing you, because when it comes to the Rangers, they were drafting first overall just like two years ago. They were drafting second overall just like three years ago. This was a team that was in that lottery, draft lottery contender status just as soon as a few years in the past. And so seeing the turnaround this quickly to the point where now Lafreniere and Kako are on the team, they're in the top six doing their thing, you have yourselves a team that has gotten so good so quickly that it's kind of interesting to see where they can go in the trade deadline side because they do have a whole bunch of cap space and they do have a pretty good roster already. So the thing is, how are they going to improve? Is this going to be an acquisition kind of year where you go out in the trade deadline and you say, yeah, we have to add, we have to become better, we have to put more pieces onto this already pretty good roster and try to contend? I mean, you have yourselves guys in their primes like Sabanajad and Kreider and Panarin that are doing so well that you kind of owe it to these guys to go out there on a run, don't you? Not to mention the early experience that a run could go out there and serve for guys like Lafreniere and Kako and Keandre Miller, etc. And so that's kind of why we've been highlighting so many different players and all these ideas as to who the Rangers could acquire and whatnot. That this new idea, coming from Dan Rosen on his NHL.com mailbag, goes over a little bit of a different aspect. Now, this is an article from January 25th, so it is from a while ago, but... With the NHL All-Star Skills competition taking place yesterday, I kind of felt like this was appropriate, as we're going over the guy who won the, what the heck was it called, the 21 and 22 challenge? Yeah, it's the blackjack thing, it's Vegas, so they went out there with playing cards. Let's talk today about Dallas Stars forward Joe Pavelski, one of the best snipers in the NHL in my personal opinion, a guy who just is so competent. When it comes to picking corners and shooting the puck where he wants it to go, we saw this yesterday. The guy was calling his shots like crazy. He won the event for a reason, and any time he was like, okay, I gotta go for that ace up there, top left, and he does it. Like, he was fantastic in the little shootout thing they did. So, Dan Rosen's mailbag, the Red Wings approach, and the Rangers' needs before the trade deadline article goes over Joe Pavelski in a little bit of a different way. The asker here, PTC2242, asks, What is the most important for the New York Rangers right now? A veteran third pair D or a top six right wing? 
Rosen goes out there and he says right wing. That has been the need for the Rangers all season. They have five top six forwards they feel comfortable with right now based on experience, production, and positioning. Centers, Abanajad and Strom. Wings, Kreider, Panarin, and right wing Capo Caco, who is week to week with an upper body injury. Alexi Lafreniere prefers to play on the left side, but he has moved to the right side to get into top six at times. It's been inconsistent like his game. Same with Dryden Hunt, Goodrow, and Cheadle. None have played well enough to stay in the top six, and the Rangers would ideally like to stabilize it before the deadline. Rosen goes out there and he says, I think they should target Dallas Stars forward Joe Pavelski, who is in the final season of a three-year $21 million contract. It's unclear if Pavelski will be available, but if he is, he's the one I'd go after because he's a veteran goal scorer with a right-handed shot who would upgrade the net front presence on New York's second power play unit. Fitting Pavelski under the NHL salary cap is not a concern. The Rangers have the space. They have two second-round picks in the 2022 draft and a glut of young and promising yet still developing defensemen, including Lundqvist, Robertson, Raunanen, Jones, I wouldn't trade Braden Schneider either. Each could be of interest to the Stars, especially if Klingberg's days in Dallas are numbered. And so, this is our idea right here. Pavelski, 37 years old, 5'11", 194, right-handed shot, making 7 million bucks this season. This contract expires at the end of the year, and he's got a modified no-trade clause. Now, the Stars, why would you want to go out there and say the Stars would be even willing to do this? Well, you gotta consider some things here, especially since they are out of that Central Division playoff race, or, I mean, they're not technically out, they're right in the middle there, with 48 points and 43 games played, but they're 9 points behind the Blues, 11 points behind the Wild, it's not really looking likely that Dallas is gonna be able to come in here and crack that playoff picture, they're only 2 points ahead of Vancouver for crying out loud, so... When it comes to the Stars, you're already in a position where you're probably going to have to trade Klingberg. That's a really good player that's going to leave your organization. Pavelski could be seen as a trade option because he does have a modified no-trade, so he's not limiting himself from every team in the NHL. Also, the fact that he is an expiring asset and you don't know if he's going to return. He's 37 years old, for crying out loud, so who really knows what his future holds? Now, to be fair, even though he is 37, he's having a really great year. 48 points, 43 games but he's got 19 goals on the year. Do the math on everything right here. He's on pace over the span of 82 games for 91 points and, what is that, 36 goals? So, yeah, Pavelski is very good, and I talk about his goal scoring, I talk about his ability to pick corners and all that. That's just one aspect to the very many positive qualities that Pavelski brings out there on the ice. Two-way stability, playmaking, he's got a lot going for him, and so... The fact is, if you acquire a Pavelski if you're New York, this guy honestly is a lot better than any of the other right-wing options you have, debatably even better than Capo Caco. Like, you could realistically try to put Pavelski on your first line, and that would probably be an experiment that I would be on board with. Like, you take a look at the Dallas Stars and where their point production is coming from, this is no longer Sagan and Ben's team. This is Robertson, it's Hintz, it's Pavelski. That first line is incredible, and in fact, Miro Heiskanen has more points than Sagan and Ben do. It's kind of funny. And so, even though it might be difficult for the Dallas Stars in any respect, with the way their season has gone this year, to trade away one of the best pieces on their team, Pavelski is one of the three fantastic players on that first line. And it might be difficult to move on from him, but if you could get yourselves a prospect on the blue line that could help out replace Klingberg in the long term, I honestly think you think about it. Now, for the Rangers, it is sort of difficult to try to map out what a return could be, because Pavelski would be a pure rental. Like, this is a guy that is probably not going to stick around for a long time after this season when his contract is up. But I have a tough time thinking about what he would actually fetch on the market. Mostly because, for New York, and this was a point that I saw made on Twitter by, I believe it was Statboy Steven, the New York Rangers were unwilling to part with Niels Lungfist and Braden Schneider for Eichel. So... When you're talking about JT Miller, or maybe a Pavelski, or any other forward that's on the market, would they be willing to touch those guys in a trade for one of those players? I'm not sure. Jack Eichel is a very good player, and they refuse to touch any of those top defenseman prospects in a conversation for him. So, what does Pavelski go for? Is it a coagulation of second-round picks? Is it a first-round pick? Do you touch one of the other guys that they were not willing to depart with in the Eichel conversation, so Lundqvist or Schneider? Does that mean a Zach Jones or a Ronanen is on the board? Not really too sure. 
So, Rangers fans, let me know in the comments, what do you think about Joe Pavelski and his entire profile as a player? Would you like to get this guy? And if so, what is the cost you would be willing to pay? If you're a Stars fan, what do you want from the New York Rangers side of things? Is it indeed a defenseman to replace John Klingberg? Talk to me in the comments, all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rajas 99. And, bye.